Hello. We're going to take a look at a couple of examples of negative feedback circuits um, and see how the negative feedback affects their parameters, gain input resistance, output resistance. So we've we've seen already how the gain gets affected for um, a generic uh, block diagram of an amplifier, but we haven't looked at any specific circuits. We're going to take the case of the non-inverting amplifier. It's a simple circuit. Uh, it's a voltage amplifier which exhibits uh, a particular type of uh, feedback configuration, uh, specifically it's a series shunt configuration, also known as series voltage. And the reason why it receives this name is because uh, the, the voltage is sampled at the output. Uh, voltages are always sampled in shunt, and then it is fed at the input uh, in series with the input signal. And so that's why it refers, you know, series shunt is fed back in the input in series, is um, sampled at the output in parallel or in shunt. Um, also series voltage because uh, it gets input uh, or it gets fed at the input in series with the input signal, and then what we sample at the output is a voltage. But anyway, you can uh, go back and review the four types of uh, negative feedback amplifiers, series voltage, series current, parallel voltage, and parallel current. Um, but we had already uh, studied previously how the, the series voltage or series shunt configuration was the ideal configuration for a, a voltage amplifier. And we're going to see very soon why. Uh, but first of all, you know, let's just analyze the effect on gain and, and corroborate that it indeed uh, reduces and stabilizes the gain of the non-inverting amplifier, the negative feedback configuration does. So I have my non-inverting amplifier input signal being fed into the non-inverting input terminal. I have my feedback network comprised of resistors R1 and R2. Um, I'm going to draw a little box around my feedback network so that we understand this is what I have previously labeled as beta. And in this case, uh, my beta is basically, is the gain factor of the feedback network, right? And so in this case, I have a voltage divider, right? And so my input signal, which is V out, is gonna be uh, multiplied times uh, or this voltage divider equation, uh, which is going to be R1 divided by R1 plus R2 to give me my feedback signal, right? And so I will have my, my feedback voltage here it's basically going to be beta times V out. And then I can see that my new input at, um, at the input of the op amp in this case, I'm going to have my error signal, which is basically uh, the difference, the error is V in minus VF, which we can see it is the case. Uh, VF is being added in a subtracting manner just by the circuit configuration. Okay, so we can perform similar calculations to what we uh, previously did to figure out the closed loop gain of the system ACL, which is uh, in this case V out over V in. And in the previous example, we did it more generally using X out and X in because signals can really be voltages or currents in electronic circuits. But in this case, we are dealing with an example of of a voltage amplifier. So we're going to be using voltage type of signals. Um, and the closed loop gain is to differentiate uh, or to be differentiated from the open loop gain. We already know what the open loop gain of the op amp is. It's A as labeled in the op amp. But once I connect this negative feedback network to it, now I have a new amplifier, which is comprised not just of the op amp, but op amp A um, and resistors R1 and R2. And so what is the, the, the um, gain of the overall system of the closed loop system? Uh, so again, as we previously saw, I can express V out as the gain times uh, the input signal, the differential input signal in the case of the op amp, which it is the error signal in this case. And so A times V in minus VF, the feedback voltage. And I can express my feedback voltage as beta times the output voltage, beta times V out. And so now I have an equation in terms of V out and V in. I can um, put together all the V out terms on one side of the equation, all the V in terms on the other side of the equation, and come up with an expression for 
ACL as I did previously, V out over V in, which is going to be um, just as before, 1 over beta divided by uh, 1 plus 1 over A times beta. And that's after you have already divided numerator and denominator by A times beta. So same expression as before, um, but let's see what that means in this case. So I have 1 over beta. What does that mean in this case? So if beta is R1 divided by R1 plus R2, then 1 over beta is R1 plus R2 divided by R1. And all that divided by 1 plus 1 over A times beta. And, um, and so that will be... Um, a times beta, beta will be R1 plus R2 divided by R1. Um, and so I can just say R1 divided by... Let's... 1 plus... Um, 1 over beta is R1 plus R2 divided by R1 and then an A in the denominator. So this will be my expression for the closed loop gain um, of the non-inverting amplifier. Now you may say, well, that's not the expression I'm familiar with. Um, and that's, that's true. And, uh, that's true because as we previously said, uh, we must note that when a times beta is much larger than one, then, um, one plus one over a times beta can be approximated as being equal to one. And therefore the closed loop gain can be approximated as one over beta. And in this case, one over beta um, will be R1 plus R2 divided by R1, which can also be expressed as one plus R2 over R1. And so again, we can see uh, the approximation leads us to uh, the expression for the closed loop gain of the non-inverting amplifier that we already should be familiar with. Um, let's take a look now at how the negative feedback affects the input and output resistance of this uh, series shunt feedback amplifier.